Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Clubo. Do you have a stack of holiday fat quarters just waiting for inspiration? In this video, I'll demonstrate how to create 30 ornaments from a stack of nine fat quarters. We will be making gathered angels, stuffed angels, and stocking ornaments. They're fun and easy, so let's get started. I have a super cute new stack of holiday fat quarters. This is called the Dear Stella Sparkle All the Way Collection for um, holiday 2020. I really like this collection because the colors are unusual. It's got navy, pink, and this sort of aqua color mostly. And how could I resist Santa on his unicorn? and then some forest animals and mushrooms. And look at this one, it's so sweet. It's little elves and a unicorn with a candy cane striped horn. Anyway, I'm my personal challenge today is to create a collection with this stack of fabrics. There's also some coordinates down here, just kind of dot stripes. Um, and what I'm going to do is see if I can um, create a collection of Christmas ornaments with this stack of fabrics using up the majority of the fabrics, trying to have nothing left over and creating a coordinated collection. It's easy when we have um, pre-cuts, you know, but not every fabric comes in pre-cuts. Sometimes we have to make our own <laughs> pre-cuts. So the first thing I'm going to do is open these up, press them flat, and cut three five-inch squares from each piece. Here are my squares and I'm pairing them up, uh, one of the prints with a coordinate. So I've decided to put this one with the aqua. This will be with the kind of bright pinkish reddish color. <laughs> this is with the pink, the little um, unicorns, these little forest animals, the peach kind of match the squirrel. So I put the peach with this one. And then of course I had to cut some extras um, because I have five prints and only four coordinates. So I cut, I just decided to go with aqua to go with this last one. And we're going to make angels. So we're going to match, these will be the angel dresses. So this will be one. And I like the, um, the stripes to be vertical. So I will sew these together for one angel dress. And then for the second one, we'll put the print in the center. And look at that, this is right in the middle. It's just kind of a coincidence and it's not a big deal, but um, I'm gonna sew these together in sets of three for the angel dresses, and I'll be right back. I've sewn my sets of squares together and pressed all the seam allowances to the darker colored fabric. I'm using white thread, and now you can decide if you want to press up a hem on the bottom of the dress or not. I'm not going to. And then I will add some lace to the bottom and I like to have a lace that has a distinct pattern and it has something thick for my stitches to grab onto. So I like these by the spool Wyla from Joanne Fabrics. Um, you can get them on sale. There's all kinds of different designs, thicknesses, colors even. There's white and off-white. And I'm going to just apply these different laces to the bottom of the dress. I'll use a narrow zigzag and I'll go right over the thick header in the lace. And I feel confident that that's going to secure the lace and it's going to look good. And I'm not going to worry about my raw edges. If you like, you can always turn up a quarter of an inch before you do this, but I'm just gonna wing it. I'm not a perfectionist. I've sewn the lace on the first one and I wanted to show you before I go on. I did a little narrow zigzag. Hope you can see that here. 
and just apply the lace to the hem and since I have this in my hands, I'm gonna fold this over and I'm going to seam up the back. Here is my stack of dresses all ready to go. And I just wanted to show you how the back is seamed up after the lace goes on. And then I just turn it right side out and this will be gathered up to form a dress. But first, let's get started on the face and the petticoat. I have already created the face on this 25 millimeter wooden bead. Uh, you can find the instruction for my faces on my Focus on Faces video. The eyes are wood burned, the features are painted, the details are a marker, and then there's just some blush on the cheeks. So for the 25 millimeter bead, I'm going to use two lengths of six inch wide tulle. Uh, since the dress is about five and a half inches long, I'm going to probably have two pieces of tulle about 15 inches long. This is maybe a little, I think I made this a little too long. It's about half a yard, which is, like I say, a little bit too long, but um, just as long as you have four lengths of tulle, so two that are doubled over, and then a little bit longer than the dress. I'm tying, I'm tying them off in the center with a 1 16th inch wide ivory satin ribbon. And then I'm going to thread this through the head bead from the bottom to the top. Then I'll slide that down over the tool just until a knot is right there on the top. Then I'll back it out again and squeeze out a little bit of hot glue right there in the back. And then slide the head on again, just until the knot is right there at the top of the head. Then I'll tie an overhand knot in the top of the ribbon. This will become her hanging loop. And trim off the ends. I need to make 10 of these for my 10. Now I'll gather up the dress to fit around the angel. I'm going to secure my thread right here in the back in the seam allowance and I have a doubled strand of craft and button thread or button and craft thread. This one. <laughs> button and craft thread. And I'm just going to uh, gather it up through a single layer all the way around and I'm taking fairly long stitches and I'll go all the way around and then I'll place it around her neck and pull it tight. I'm a little bit less than a quarter of an inch below the raw edge. All right, so this is gathered all the way around. I also like to use a thimble and I'll pull the angel through, draw the thread tight I'm going to center her face above the center panel and then wrap this around a couple of times and secure the thread. I secure the thread by sewing back and forth a couple of times and then I just tie it off in the back. So maybe I'll go, there's my seam right in the back. I like to see that. <laughs> Sometimes it'll creep around to the side, but Ideally, it'll be in the back. And then I'll knot this off. I'm not too worried because I know that there's glue and other things that will help to secure these threads. Now I'm going to trim out this extra tool on the bottom. I'm careful not to cut any of the lace but I like a little bit of the tool to show. 
reminds me of a petticoat. And now I'm going to sew a collar. This is 15 inches of 5 eighths inch wide flat lace. And I'm going to use a single strand of thread. First, I want to determine the right side of the lace, fold it over, and I'll secure my knot here in the header so it grabs nice and tight. And then I'll gather through the mesh at the top, just below the header, all the way to the end. There we go, now I'll place this around her neck and I'll join the ends in the back. I'm joining the ends and then I'm just gonna check in the front and make sure that's nice and tight. And you see how the lace is concealing all the raw edges from the uh, dress fabric. So that's why I don't worry too much about the extra raw edge or the fraying or anything like that because I know it'll be concealed. I'm going to knot this off. Make sure the gathers are distributed evenly around the collar and that looks good. But now I have nine more to go. I'll be back. My 10 little angels are dressed. They have their lace collars and they're ready for their hair. To make the hair for these angels, the 25 millimeter bead, I like to use this index card technique. And um, I have a variety of different uh, yarns for the hair, and I don't have enough of any one to make them all the same. So they're going to have a variety of different looks. I fold the card in half this way, and then I'm going to wrap this way. I'll cover the card with these sort of, um, you know, wraps, not pulling too tightly because I don't want the card to bend. And I'll just cover the card and then go back in the, then go back. I think this is enough. Now I'm going to machine sew across the center. I sewed across the center back and forth in two directions and now I'll remove the card. I'm just going to tear. It's perforated in the center from the sewing and so it comes out pretty easily. And there's her little wig, like this. So let me select one of these. And I'm gonna determine the center of the wig and I'm going to glue that along the forehead. I'll wrap the ends around the back so that they meet together in the back. So first I'll apply a little bit of little line of glue um, to, the, to the hairline in the front. And I'll press the seam into the hairline, into the glue. And now I'm going to apply some glue from here, down along here to the center back. Then I'll press that seam into the glue and that goes right to the back of the head. There's a little bit of give um, in, the, in the seam. So if it seems like, um, this isn't long enough, you can always pull, or if it's too long, you can kind of work it in. Then I'll apply the last bit of glue from here around to here. And then I'm going to press the rest of the seam into that line. That looks good. So I'm gonna pull that wig up into a top knot and I'm going to tie it off with thread. I like to have the thread on a needle, 
but you don't have to. Pulling it nice and tight, I have a nice sturdy thread. See how she looks. Now let's add a couple of decorations. I think red is going to work for her. So I'm going to put some red baker's twine on my needle. Then I'll sew this right through the lace underneath her chin. Then I'll tie a little bow. I'll trim off the streamers about even with the hem of the dress and tie off the streamers. And then I usually like a little decoration here at her neck, which I'll figure that out. And then a halo, and then a little decoration for her hair. Here are some options. I've got my trusty Glitter holly and my red bows, white bows, white flowers, and gold glitter stars. I think I might go with a star. There's no green in any of the fabrics and I think this would be cute, but it's just not quite right. I think we'll just go with the gold. Now I could put this also in her hair but I think I'll put the red bow in her hair instead. Right? Well, I might mix it up. The red bow in her hair, and then the halo. When you make a mess, you know you're having fun. As I tell my kids, I love when they make a mess. and then some wings. For the wings, I've cut these scallop circles from, um, from scrapbooking paper. And um, this is like one of those pads of paper so that it gives you both sides. Uh, and this one's called Candy Cane Christmas. So this is the kind of scrapbook paper that I cut these out from. I use my die cutting machine and, ooh, I like this stripe and um, cut out this scallop circle, which is, which is about four and a half inches. And then I'm going to fold it. Hmm. I think I'll fold this one on the diagonal. That seems like it would work. Just fold it over, and then I'm going to zigzag about a quarter of an inch in from the edge. This is how it looks, and I really like it with this particular angel, so I'm just going to use this one. I'll squeeze out a little bit of glue in the top center of the wing piece, then I'll press it into the back of her head. So it goes up pretty high. Don't put it down at her, on her shoulders. It doesn't quite work, but just up high like that, the back of her head, and I know I didn't describe very well how to make the halo, so I'll do one more. I'll finish up one more. This one's done. So we have one, nine more to go. Let me try to pick one with different colors. Okay. This is a four by six inch index card, which I fold in half. So I've sewn across the center and then I'll remove the card. I'll apply the glue right along the hairline up here. Now for the um, halo, I'm gonna cut off maybe six inches 
of this gold wire, which is a 20 gauge gold wire. And then I'm going to cross the ends over to make a circle like this. Then I'm going to bend this stem like that. And then I'm gonna put some glue here on the end and press that into her top knot, right into the center next to the ribbon. That looks good. Then I'll add a red bow. One of these little bows. You can add anything you like. One of the flowers would be cute. Um, you could put a holly in her hair. And now I have my baker's twine, which I sew through the little gathers. And then tie a bow. Trim off the streamers. Tie overhand knots in the ends. And then my little gold star. Even though the star already has some adhesive, I always add my own. There's the star. And then I'll have to choose the wings. I pulled this one out because it had some pink, but that's not quite right, is it? Um, I have this one, which is almost the same as this fabric, it's very close. Picks up a little bit, I think I'll use this one. So I'll put a little penny sized circle of glue right here. And then press that onto the back of the head like this. And she's done. I like that, that's really cute. The gold halo and the gold sticker kind of playing along and then the wings kind of pick up this um, aqua color in the print. This this um, white stitching kind of looks like, I like it. All right, so I have eight more to go. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe. Please stay tuned for part two, the stocking.